The goal of Katamari Domacy is simple. Roll up as much stuff as you can with your Katamari, this bumpy ball thing. There's technically a story involving the little dude that's moving it, but really nobody cares. The game is about stuff. And I mean that literally. It's a game that is deeply concerned with objects. This emphasis on objects aligns with the object-oriented ontology, a philosophical framework created by Graham Harmon, which broadly states that objects exist independently of human perception and that they have their own inherent properties and agency. Or to give a simpler explanation by Ian Bogost, ontology is the philosophical study of existence. Object-oriented ontology puts things at the center of the study. Its proponents contend that nothing has special status, but that everything exists equally. Plumbers, cotton, bonobos, DVD players, and sandstone, for example. In contemporary thought, things are usually taken as the aggregation of ever smaller bits, or as constructions of human behavior and society. Object-oriented ontology steers a path between the two, drawing attention to things at all scales, and pondering their nature and relations with one another as much as with ourselves. This philosophy is something that I think is strongly reflected in Katamari Damacy. The true main character of the game is the Katamari, a non-human thing, and the gameplay is about how it interacts with the other objects around it. And when viewed through the lens of object-oriented ontology, Katamari Damacy becomes a fascinating example of object-oriented thinking. The game's mechanics emphasize the autonomy and agency of objects, as each item that the player collects retains its individuality and characteristics within the Katamari. No matter what the Katamari rolls up, each object maintains its integrity and identity, even as it becomes a part of a larger whole. Furthermore, Katamari Damacy challenges traditional hierarchies of objects by showcasing the equal importance of all things, regardless of the significance that we might place on it. We don't think about each object's monetary value or utility, we just roll it up. In the world of the game, a firewood coexists right alongside something like a... what is that? An umbrella, a kid's umbrella. They both contribute to the Katamari's growth and evolution equally. This egalitarian approach to objects aligns with the principles of object-oriented ontology, which emphasizes the fundamental equality of all entities. Core to this philosophy is that humans are not prioritized over anything else. They too are considered objects. So into the Katamari they go too. Both object-oriented ontology and Katamari do- wait, wait, wait a second. I I'm stuck here, give me, give me, okay, here I go, okay. Both object-oriented ontology and Katamari Damacy are trying to decenter the individual as part of our understanding of the world. Think of the entire universe as outside of our perceptions. Another similarity can be seen by how Katamari Damacy handles groups. I can collect one of these guys, I can even collect two of them, but I can't collect the two that are seated together. This is another interesting quirk of object-oriented ontology. A thing and a group of that thing can both be seen as objects. A tree is as much an object as a forest, after all. This may seem unintuitive, but we can also relate to something like math, where sets and subsets are both sets. You understood that reference, right? You're all keeping up with your set theory? You've been doing all your math homework? It is one of the prerequisites for this YouTube video. Anyway, when you get all these objects together, and as your Katamari grows, it feels powerful both because it's a typical video game moment of growing big and strong, and because this all-encompassing philosophy that seems separate from any human bias seems transcendent. We are leaving behind the human, creating something bigger and better. This is also the appeal of object-oriented ontology, and honestly philosophy in general, and in some ways even to this very video. Often when a video essayist connects an object of pop culture to philosophy, it's to raise the intellectual value of the object, to put them on the same level in some way. If I'm making a video about a kid's movie like High School Musical 2, it might seem a little silly, but if I say it articulates Marxist theory somehow, maybe you'll take it more seriously. And there's a reason why those kinds of videos are so popular. It's a form of elevated populism, making you feel smarter for something that you already enjoyed. But I don't want to do that here. I have a lot of respect for Katamari Damacy, but I do not respect object-oriented ontology. I see it as a small flaw in an otherwise smart and interesting game. Despite the way I've presented it, 
object-oriented ontology is honestly seen as kind of a joke. Not to the same extent as, say, Nick Land or Jordan Peterson, because the theory is worth taking seriously, but most philosophers are very critical of the movement, and I can't say I've really experienced anyone who's an honest advocate for it. And there are a lot of good critiques out there, but the one I am most attached to is in its depiction of time. And this too is reflected in Katamari Damacy. The Katamari can collect seemingly anything that exists, and that gives it a sublime effect. It feels like a grand encapsulation of commodities, of nature, of people, of, well, everything. But it can only focus on the things that currently exist in the present moment. How can we say that we are collecting everything when we are not collecting the past or the future? The best criticism of object-oriented ontology I've read is in Arjun Klein-Herrenbrink's paper, The Two Times of Objects, and it takes a similar approach. He makes an argument drawing from the philosopher Gilles Deleuze, writing, Humans can artificially extract a single moment from this variation and call it the present, but we can never make the body that is the cause of such an event present to our experience. We can attend to any given moment in our past, present, or future, but all we can ever find are series of incorporeal events that were produced and transitioned into further events that were then produced. When we are collecting objects in Katamari, it would be a mistake to think of them as static objects in time. Everything is in a state of becoming, of changing, of transition into something new. We attach ourselves to something we think of as a tree, but to sufficiently conceptualize it as an object, we must also think of it as the seed that it once was, and as the mulch it will one day become. When we think of all the people we have collected, we must think of each child as someone who will one day become an adult, and think of adults as someone who was once a child. Yet in the object-oriented ontology espoused in the Katamari Damacy, we can only recognize them as who they are in the present. The Katamari can collect everything, except time. Arjun encourages us to take a Deleuzian approach to objects instead. Deleuze's philosophy invites us to understand objects not as static entities frozen in time, but as processes in continuous transformation. Deleuze emphasizes the importance of difference and repetition as fundamental to the nature of reality. For him, repetition is not merely the recurrence of the same, but the re-emergence of difference through variation. When we apply this Deleuzean perspective to Katamari Damacy, we begin to see the objects we collect not as fixed and immutable, but as instances within an ongoing process of becoming. Each object embodies a series of transformations, a history of changes that extend beyond its present form. A tree is not just a tree. It is a moment in a continuous process that includes its past as a seed and its future as mulch. Similarly, every person we roll up in the Katamari has a past and a future that contributes to their present identity. Deleuze's concept of difference helps us appreciate the uniqueness of each object, not as a solitary being, but as an assemblage of relations and potentials. Objects are defined by their differences from one another and by their capacity to change over time. This approach contrasts with the static view of objects in object-oriented ontology, which tends to isolate objects from their temporal context and from the processes that constitute their being. By adopting a Deleuzean lens, we can reframe our understanding of the Katamari itself. Instead of seeing it as a mere collector of static objects, we can view it as a dynamic assemblage that highlights the interconnectedness and transformation of everything it touches. This perspective would express Deleuze's monism, which sees the universe as an interconnected whole. In this light, the Katamari can be seen as a manifestation of this underlying unity, rolling up objects and integrating them into one. But what if we did the opposite? What if we started by conceptualizing everything as a whole, as a single Katamari containing everything, and removed objects from it? It wouldn't be nearly as fun to play, but if we did, then we can continue our analysis in the same Deleuzean lens, and construct a new ontology, a new theory of objects. In this hypothetical game, we'd begin with a complete, undifferentiated whole, a Katamari containing every possible object and their potential states. As we progress, we would remove objects, highlighting their individual trajectories, their becomings, and their transformations over time. This approach would align Deleuze's emphasis on multiplicity and becoming, allowing us to appreciate the dynamic processes that constitute reality. Deleuze's work emphasizes the importance of understanding objects and events through their differences, and the processes of their repetition over time. In this hypothetical game, the reverse Katamari, we focus on the differences that define each object's unique existence and the repetitive processes that shape their continuous becoming. We do not conceptualize an object because it is a thing in itself, 
but because it continues to have the same properties over its duration. By doing so, we embrace Deleuze's idea that reality is not a collection of static entities, but a dynamic interplay of forces and transformations. And this method of starting with a whole and dissecting it also aligns with Deleuze's concept of differences. Instead of viewing objects as isolated and independent, we see them as interconnected and constantly in flux. This perspective helps us to understand the deeper, underlying processes that give rise to the diversity and complexity of the world. But that would be a really shitty game. It's more fun to roll stuff up. Gonna be honest, Katamari Damacy made the right call. I give the gameplay a 10, the sound a 10, the story the 10, and the graphics, the graphics, that's a 10, baby. Total score is a 10 out of 10 across the board. Better get that game of the year edition ready, even though it's like two decades later or whatever. That's right, this video is secretly a product review the entire fucking time.